well. And okay, the recording started. So go ahead, Karen. Oh, well, I'm Karen Angelette and I'm retired. Thank goodness. I, I, I After this last year, I was so glad to get out of this mess before, <laughs> before it all happened for me anyway. Um, uh, I've been in and out of school libraries for 30 plus years, closer to 35, I think. And I've done elementary, I've done middle school. My very first job was in a, a junior, senior high school in Glendale, very small, and has a, has a classified assistant. And so I, I've done a little bit of everything, including being in the classroom. And um, then also I, in Medford, I oversaw 14 elementary schools. So I was the media specialist over the 14 elementary schools and their assistants. So I have a lot of background. And I became the destiny queen. <laughs> That's how I referred to myself um, because you know, we just used it in Medford quite a bit. So I'm hoping I can answer some of your questions and show you some tricks that I've learned over the years. So. Yeah, and you, and you also, um, like if you ever get bored in retirement, um, you know, I joined the, the state LISTA, the library, uh, where you review all the grant applications. And so many of those are for um, consultants. I'm like, Karen, and they get paid a lot of money. Well, almost a full year salary, some of those consultants. And because wow. you you essentially like when you worked at the ESD, it's like you were a consultant and went around to all the little tiny school districts and consulted and like analyzed their situation and helped them improve to whatever capacity they could, which is what everyone needs. Um, that's what we need. So thank you for helping us. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, and Liz, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Liz. I'm the uh, library aide at the high school here in Florence. Um, I've probably been here about two months now, um, but I TA'd all throughout um, high school for Hope, who was the who I'm filling in for. She's the actual library aide. I'm the long-term sub, but I TA'd. Um, as soon as I was allowed to TA, I think I started my sophomore year. So I know how to do a lot of the stuff that Hope does. So yeah. Awesome. It's nice to meet you. Liz is amazing. And Andreas, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, my name is Andreas. I'm here at the City Sun Middle School. Uh, this is my third year here as the library aide. And uh, I still have a lot to learn for destiny. <laughs> um, a lot of us weren't actually trained before we, we started up on our jobs. Oh, and so, uh, <laughs> yep, I feel like we're, we're in good company with, with, uh, with that. We're all in the same boat. Um, but yeah, so I have, I have a lot to learn. Yeah. And Karen, Andreas genreified the middle school library inside huge increase in circulation numbers. And you know how a lot of people feel about genreification, like yeah. it sounds yeah. lovely in theory, but in practice, a lot of people are scared of doing it. Andreas did an amazing job and we're a smaller, we're only a school district of like 1400. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in the process of genreifying at the high school. And, and if you're going to do it, now's the time, you know, with kids out of the building. So that's kind of just where we're at. Um, all right, and I did I did briefly show them your agenda that you sent me this morning. Uh -huh. um, so probably for the sake of time, I mean, maybe we should just start letting you start chipping away and going through that. And so everyone should have their catalog open so we can follow along with you, Karen. Okay, uh, yeah, hold on a second and, and I need to figure out, there we go um because i want to share my screen and so i haven't done this in a while yeah there should be on the bottom if you hover and you see a bottom toolbar there should be a green share screen do you see that sometimes yeah, I, I have it right here so there it is okay so now i've already logged myself into destiny can you guys see that okay we can yep yeah. 
And I'm going to see if I can bump up my fonts just a little bit. Does that help? Yes. Okay. All right. So I have basically there were four reports I wanted to share with you. I'm going to stick you guys over here in the corner. And I wanted to talk about the first one, the daily statistics report, which is um, super easy to get to, but contains quite a bit of information for you. And it's one that you people, you've probably seen it. You may have even clicked on it and looked at it, but there's some really good information out of there that we can see. And then that tells you if you need to do some other things. So that report is under circulation and I'm in library view, by the way. And of course, every time I put your little faces somewhere, you're in the way. So, um, and we're gonna go down here to library information. And when you get notes from me, um, that tells you how to get somewhere, I always start at this bar here, then I go down this bar here, and then I go to the tabs across the top. So that's how my directions automatically read if I if you get something like that, so you can find them yourself. It's just a shorthand that I learned over the years. So I'm in library information and um, we're not going to worry too much about due dates, although this is kind of handy to know when things are due and what the grace date is and all of that. But what the one we're going to use is statistics. And so if you'll go to statistics, and I'm at the elementary school, it's going to tell you a whole lot of information. So uh, you can see right here, uh, checked out as 615, overdue as 500. I never have worried about that, but especially this year, don't worry about overdues or lost or anything like that. That's part of what we're looking at to clear up. If you have holds or things that are pending or things that have expired, unpaid library fines, you can ignore that. Um, we. Those are just stuff that's out there that uh, uh, Destiny compiles. And if it becomes an issue later on, then you know where you can see it. Over here is what we're looking at. So we're gonna start with materials and slow me down or talk to me if I go too fast. But we're gonna look at materials here and we see that you have 17,822 title records in Destiny in your catalog. So in, in theory, that means you have 17,822 books and then copies show you that you have more than one copy of several titles. But the one, and that's fine, that's what you want, right? You might want four copies of Harry Potter or The Lightning Thief or, or um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, any of those things. Down here, though, is the one that Jen and I talked about. Oh, I just want that. Titles without copies. And that, those are books, they're title records in your catalog somewhere that don't have any copies attached to it anymore. You may have deleted the last copy. You may have started entering uh, new books, forgot you entered one or somebody else before you forgot you entered something and uh, didn't add it. It might be eBooks because eBooks and Destiny don't enter copies. Um, it might be that you started entering equipment in here and then changed your mind. It could be any number of things but you really don't need titles without copies. And there's a simple way to delete those. And I'll show that to you, but it's something Jen can do from her desk, one foul swoop over the weekend and have it done. And she can do all, all of your libraries. Going down here to patrons, um, who's the elementary? They're not here, right? Yep, she's not here. So um, 
your elementary school shows that you have 1,379 patrons, 762 of those are active. So how many do you really have, how many kids do you really have? Probably closer to 500 kids at the okay. elementary. Yeah, and so that, and I'll bet you, uh, Andreas and Liz, when you look at your yours, you're seeing a huge number more than you actually have in school, right? Yeah, and what that indicates is basically just some cleanup needs to be done that probably nobody knew they needed to do. And that's one of the things I'm gonna show you how to do today is clean those up. Any questions so far? All right. So also in this library snapshot here, some other fun things is top patrons. You know, who, who's your top checkouts, right? A lot of times it's a teacher because they're doing all the checkout right now. It's, and for I think in the elementary schools, the teachers are checking things out and sharing them. So it's not gonna help you much. Top homerooms and grades, if you're doing that, when you get back to normal days and top and bottom titles, just for fun, you can see what are the most popular titles. So I'm back at the statistics report. And this is kind of interesting because you can go down and you can check statistics for a period of time. So if you want to say, um, justify a book budget, for example, and I did this a lot, you can say this is how um, many items were checked out last year has compared to this year, or staffing issues, if you want to say, because we cut our staff back by 30%, we also cut our circulation back and you can show and equate that. So it's, it's kind of fun to do if you have time, uh, but not important. We've been for sure, um, I like to get at least five years worth of data of quarterly and then annual uh, circulation statistics just just to see how we're doing mm -hmm. um, so I did I did sh I have shared some of that with the team um, we look at our circulation statistics by quarter and then we've looked at them like how does this pandemic year compare to the fact the last three years just to kind of get a sense of where we're at we're about one tenth of our normal um, circulation this year. And, and that's what I would expect. I, I'm not at all surprised about that. So um, anyway, that's that's an overview of this screen here. And we're, now we're going to take that information from materials and patrons and we're going to apply it elsewhere. Are you with me so far? All right. So we're going to go look at our patrons and I'm going to show you how to run a couple of reports. So faculty patron report, because I'll bet you you're going to find and I'm in reports and I'm going to go to patron reports and I'm going to go to patron names. And this is where you can run a report to see who's who what faculty are still in my catalog? What kindergartners, if you have a kindergarten thing, what does some of this stuff mean? And so I'm gonna go ahead and run a faculty report for the elementary. And I'm, I want them by name, that'll put them in alphabetical order. Because I'm doing faculty, sometimes it's nice to show all site associations. Now, Jen, you told me you don't have automatic updates through the district, right? You guys do. Yeah, everything's manual. Yeah, okay. And with patrons, that's almost easier sometimes. So I'm not gonna worry about all site associations this time. I do wanna have all my active, inactive, and restricted faculty, but I need to choose my faculty and that's this update button. Right now, if I ran that report, it would be all my patron types. If I click update, these are my selected patron types. 
And these were created back um, probably when Destiny was started or when um, Fallout was created, when you guys created Fallout and they just transferred over. And the one I'm noticing here is this Lost. Um, I don't think, I think it's a mistake. I think somebody created a lot, wanted a spot for lost books, circulation type, and they put accidentally put it under patron types. And so that's easy to get rid of. And I'll even show you guys that pretty quick. So I'm gonna click off parents, primary, student, kindergarten, and lost. And then I'm just gonna tell it, okay. Graduation year doesn't apply here. And so I'm gonna go run report. And here's the thing about reports. You can run reports until you're blue in the face and they do no harm, right? It just gives you information, doesn't change your catalog in any way. And it's a great way to learn a little bit. So I'm gonna view this patron report and you're gonna go through here and look and see on this report who you have at, that are patron or your staff, what are, who has staff level. And this one is like, nine pages. So I'm betting a lot of these staff members are gone. Right. And what I would do is go to your uh, office manager, ask her for a current list of staff. If you don't already have one somewhere, sometimes schools give them out, compare which ones they are and go in and delete them. And does everybody know how to delete patrons? Liz, Andreas. Andreas also has an event going on in their library. So if you see them pop in and out, that's why. No, <laughs> Serving I, customers. I, I, that's fine. <laughs> I understand that as well. I think I think everyone feels pretty confident in deleting patrons. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm not going to demonstrate that right now. Any it, does it, any other questions on this? Pretty basic. You can do this also if you have, um, let's go, I'm gonna go here to, to the high school. I hope that's okay, Liz. And um, when I go to that reports and patron reports, I can look down here and patron names. And when I update this, you have faculty, student and public. And I don't know what public is used for. Do you have any idea? No. So it might be that somebody set it up to uh, create a public account at one time and you don't need that anymore. And so you can delete that. And I'm gonna walk you through some of that too. And then Andreas, let's take a look at, at the middle school and see what you've got there too. Hey, Karen, and we're trying to build our end of the year procedures. You know how it's like you forget how to do the things because you only do it once a year, et cetera. Do you, is this part of, was this part of your typical end of the year or beginning of the year? Like you just I update faculty. Updated faculty about October, maybe early November, because by then all the, the you know, in Medford, we had a lot of shifting going on at the first of the year because there was, you know, maybe 200 more kids than they expected at one place and they would shift faculty from the um, elementary schools around and the middle schools around. And so I kind of waited to do that. But in Medford, they updated it themselves or it was updated through the district the students were updated through the district i had them stop when i first started there updating the faculty because we kept getting duplicate uh faculty members 
for example, our music teacher, there were two music teachers or three at the elementary schools and they were listed six times, right? Each one was listed six times because they were at six different schools where they really should have had one account and six school associations. Does that make sense? Because we wanna know if Mrs. Smith has books checked out or equipment, band instruments or whatever checked out wherever at all the sites. And it needs to be under one account instead of checking for six. So, oh, I was looking Andreas at yours and you have a patron type G. Do you know what that is? No it, idea. Yep. No idea. <laughs> it's a surprise. Yeah, you know what? That, that's the fun part is you get to look at the these things and you think, huh? I wonder what that. I wonder what was going on that created that patron type G. So patron types are really actually pretty easy to get rid of, um, and that's under admin. And if you go to library policies. Here's your patron types right here. And uh, you guys have probably seen this because this is where you put in your due dates at the big in, beginning of the year, the end of the year. Um, make sure that student is a default type so you don't putting kids under faculty. I've had that happen when they automatically import, um, you know, the 20 kids that came into school that day were all faculty members because that had been um, the wrong one had been checked. But if you want to get rid of that, you just click the trash can and get rid of it. If it's something you don't use, and it may have been something somebody five years ago did use, right? But it's not appropriate anymore and it's okay to get rid of it. And this is also where you set your fines and a few other things. And that's also, if you look up here, patron types, circulation types is the other thing people tend to have uh, a lot of. So I don't know what a browsing circulation type is. Um, or And again, it's something that made sense whenever they created it, but it doesn't make sense anymore to the way the library is being used. So hourly from version seven, that's probably something that was just transferred over when you went from Follett to destiny from whatever I then non circulating ebooks if people were hand entering ebooks they might have created that account. Um, then there's non circulating items there's overnight items there's regular there's a special loan you got quite a few in here and you just may not need them right so that's something you. <laughs> You and Jen. everyone could probably just just go for the regular. I'm seeing a lot of strange ones on the elementary side. I'm not going to delete anything until I talk to Julia, but really all everyone might should really need is just the regular. Yeah, um, if you have magazines that you check out overnight only or uh, reference books that maybe you check out overnight only, um, things like that, you might add put that in and assign them to the, uh, those items to that circulation account, especially maybe at the high school more. You might also have equipment. I used to check out digital cameras to kids in the high school and I would put them in an overnight only checkout so that they became uh, um, due the next day. So I would get that listing of overdues and see that right off the bat. So those are some things to think about. And that maybe when you go around, Jen, um, to visit, you can talk to everybody independently and say, you know, let's clean this up a little bit, or what do you use that for? Or, um, or maybe you don't use it and you don't need it. Or you might, you know, edit things out. So you might special loan. That could be something they set up for uh, band instruments. Who knows? It, it over the years, Destiny has been used for a lot of things, and people get this really great idea: calculators. 
we're checking out calculators to kids. So they set up a special circulation account for calculators. Well, now all the kids have a Chromebook with calculators built in or their cell phones or whatever, and you don't need that anymore. So that's why. Any questions? All right. Any questions about something you may have in your catalog that you want me to look at? All right, then we're good to move on. So going back to patron reports, reports, and they've changed this, by the way, this admin and reports since I was last using this. It used to be back office. So that's new for me, but I figured it out. So patron reports, you've got your patron names, your patron data. Um, you can run quickly uh, a report here to say who's in faculty, who's in student, right? Uh, let's go back to the elementary because that was where there were some really good ones. So if I wanted to just see who my parents were, right, then I can do the same thing. I can check and see if, if I have parents on here, run report, and um, view it. And so I've got three parents. I, when you see the old, didn't Jen, didn't you tell me that uh, the, you just recently went to Destiny? Um, they had Destiny for a while. We just shifted from uh, Destiny Classic to Destiny Discover, if oh, that makes sense. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, old was probably brought in graduation year 2004. Um, so pro I'm betting most of these you can get rid of. And then if you don't use parent checkout, and you know, I always, if parents came in and check something out, I just put it under the kid's name. So you can decide how you want to do that. Clean that up. All right. So, um, as far as like seniors, getting rid of seniors at the end of the year, that's something you want to run a report on. See, you probably do. Uh, Liz, you probably do something very similar, uh, run a, a overdue report or a, a what the kids all have checked out and, and turn keep track of that till the end of the year and then turn what they haven't turned back in for seniors into the office so they're billed for them. We were just stuffing those envelopes today, uh, Karen. <laughs> we just stuffed senior fine letters today. Yeah, and so then once they're gone, um, I, you might keep seniors that still have materials out for a year, but then you can get rid of all the other ones. And I was looking at graduation years, and you know when you see a 2004, you're never going to get that book back anyway. <laughs> and you know, you see a 2000, even a, a 2019, well, if the book comes back, yay, but I'm not going to refund you the six bucks. You've kept that book, right? Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I'll add it back in if I want it. But otherwise, bummer for you. You should have returned it two years ago. So that's my attitude. Okay. But yeah, end of the year, and the same with middle school kids. Now, I don't know how you do the middle school. Uh, in Medford, their fines went with them, right? Yeah, their, their fines are traveling with them right now. I would love to, because just as we're printing these senior letters out, you know the conversations that the front office lady has to have with the parent who's upset because a book that wasn't turned in when they were a second grader. But that, that is where we're at. And I would love to like clean up. I mean, like, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this, Karen? I wish like at grade five, we get the money from them if we're going to get it. Otherwise we clean, clean their account up when they, so we send them off to middle school fresh. And I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah, well, that's always been my thought is it's only a book, but um, the a lot of people say, well, it's our book and whatever. That's something probably you need to have a talk with your administration as well about. But my my 
theory is, especially if they're those little $2 scholastic books or whatever, get rid of them. If you're not going to put it back on the shelf anyway, take it off their account. They don't, they don't need to be um, worrying about it. And chances are, if it hasn't been paid for or the parents haven't shown any concern about it, they're not going to show any concern. And, see, and certainly, I don't think a senior should be fined two bucks for a book that they lost in second grade. Work it off of them or something. But get, I, I'm, I'm all for clearing it out and saying, that's just the way it is. We do things in second grade that we didn't do, uh, wouldn't do later. So uh, it's, it's always been my, my approach is it's only a book. Yeah, we're definitely beginning those like district, we have a lot of aligning to do. So we're beginning those, I just began that conversation with the building principles. Mm -hmm. We don't have brain space for it right now, but I'm like, is this something we need to address, you know, moving right. forward? Yeah. And I think that's reasonable. Okay, going on. Collection statistics summary report. So I'm back in reports. I'm going to library reports and I'm gonna scroll down. This is the second, this is the report that I ran the second most often on my schools. I did the library statistics one first and then the collection statistics summary. And I did this one and when you click it, it's, it's spinning its wheels for a minute. And you guys, this is really fast. Medford used to be really slow. But this tells you a lot of information if you know how to read it. So it starts off with um, your Dewey numbers here. And then when you scroll down, these are your, this is your call number field, right? Your call number prefix field to be specific. And this one's always fun because you wonder what in the world these, some of these call numbers were. And then you see something like this, prof, prof, prof. Well, that's just mistakes entered, right? And those can be cleaned up. And that's what we're looking at this for is we're gonna do some cleanup here. Ref, ref, reference, um, vid, vid, video. Call numbers should be and this, this I'm gonna I'm gonna lecture you from thirty a class thirty five years ago. Call numbers should be simple and are nothing but their location on the shelf or where you can find that item in the library, right? So it should tell you it the prefix should tell you the section of the library. And then the information after the prefix should tell you the specific spot on the shelf. That's all it is. Don't complicate it. You might have video, and then of course that's gonna be in your video section. If you have filed your DVDs and your old VHS tapes, if you still have VHS tapes, if you don't, if you do, get rid of them. If you don't, um, don't worry about it. But some people would have VHS and DVD as your call number, which is fine, but then they would file them together. So they would make sure that all copies of Dr. Seuss DVDs or VHSs are together. So then they don't need to have separate locations. They can all be under video. Does that make sense? Um, what tends to happen occasionally is people think that the description of the book should be in the call number. So for uh, uh, the most common one that I've had over the years is paperbacks, right? If you enter file your paperbacks with your fiction or your nonfiction, you don't need to designate here in your call number field that it's a paperback. If you have a separate section in your library, like maybe you have spinners where you put your paperbacks, 
then you might put PBK on those or PAP, whatever you choose. There's no right, there's no wrong. But if you're filing it on the shelf, if you're filing all of versions of your Harry Potter books together, then you just need to put fiction on that, not fiction PA, PBK or PBK fiction or whatever, just fiction. Does that make sense? And that's because they're all together. It's just a location on the shelf. And that's the most common thing I've run across over the years is, um, and it, it, I'll tell you, this goes clear back to the 80s. I can tell you when it started. It started with old librarians like me. And they, they said, we've got paperbacks and they're cheaper and, and you know, we're, they're not, we're not gonna keep them forever. Let's label them PBK and file them in a separate place. And over the years, paperbacks have taken over our collection because our budgets have been cut just so dramatically. So that's, that's where we are. So looking at this, this tells you your call numbers. So then what you look at, and I know why you have a lost one or PAP or whatever, um, it's just information. So I'm gonna go up here because I see one graphic novel. I'm betting GN stands for graphic novel. T-E-L. And if I go look at this, right, I can actually see what that is. So it's Babysitter's Club, Marianne Saves the Day, right? So you can check on those. But every time I do that, I have to rerun this report because um, Destiny doesn't keep this report in the job manager. It refreshes it every time because it's current information. So if I wanted to see all 80 books in my 200s, I can click that and see all 80 books in my 200s. And I can look through here, right? And see specifically which ones have circulated which ones have not circulated, how often they've circulated, right? So um, take David and the Giant. It has circulated a total of five times, but not in, none in the last year, right? None in this year, none today. So you can look through here. This is really helpful if you're weeding, right? So you can print up just this 200 to 299, take it back there to that section. And you can look at those and say, well, I don't know, you know, if we need to keep religions of the world. Um, and then if you look at the date of religions of the world and it's from 1982, you probably don't need to keep it either, right? So I've never looked at this report before, it's fabulous. Yeah. And one thing that we're missing or that, that everyone's adding is uh, um, as these staff members took on our library spaces, none of the books have the uh, date stamp in them. So you know how that's like a, that's a really helpful tool when you're reading is to look and see when it was even checked out. Right. We don't have that data, but actually we do. I was not aware of this report. This is really great. Yeah. And then if you also... Um, you can see more specifically in the book history. If you go to an individual title and look it up, you can see how often it circulates there. But this is just a really quick um, and easy report that you can look at section by section. Now, if you get into the fiction, of course, it's gonna be pages and pages. So I'm going back. So that's what you can do with that. Hey, Karen, uh, I'm just going to chime in real quick for time, um, just to say it's 311, and our um, middle school and high school staff members are technically done at 330. Okay, so um, the one, what I want you guys to get out of this one is that you can go in and clean these up, right? 
So let's say you want to know what this is, 5102, whatever it is, right? Well, that one says there's nothing in the catalog with that. And so, Jen, I can teach you how to delete those once they get cleaned up. So, um, or when you have another good example is um, this one right here. This is probably Libby Bray, Libba Bray or whatever, or Brawlier. And, um, oh, this is something I noticed actually. A lot of you are leaving these brackets or, or uh, I'm not gonna say you because this could be done five years ago. They'll take those brackets off, right? And get a space between FIC and the way you find this is you copy that, then you go to catalog, go by number, barcode, find that, right, here it is. And you edit that copy record and fix it. Okay, I don't know, do you use caps or upper lower case? I don't think we're standardized across the district yet. Julia, what do you use in the elementary? Capital FIC. I noticed that it was all over the board when I took over. Um, and to be honest with you, I haven't really fixed any of that. And I didn't know about the brackets. Yeah, take those brackets off. Um, and the reason for this, it, is that when you print up your spine labels, they all print up consistently, right? And the other reason is when you're running statistics, that gives you a more accurate statistics count if everything is consistent. And Jen, there is a way to batch update that. Um, and I told you that in that little email I, I sent you. Um, I, you have to be really careful. So I would recommend that you do the batch update and not your individual staff members because I did at Orchard Hill delete all of the fiction uh, titles uh, or all the FIC, the books stayed, the records stayed, but then you had to go in and, and re fix them one by one. You can't batch update when you make a mistake like that. And it took about two days of steady work, <laughs> steady boring work. Okay. So the other thing with um, running that report, and I'm going to go back and run that summary report again. Is you also get an age of your collection. And some of you may have been clicking around and check this out already, which what I would have done. So you can see that um, your 100s are, the average is 27 years. Your, so those are, would be um, uh, philosophy. 200, your religion basically is from 1985, 36 years old. Um, your science, 600s are 27 years old. And so this is really handy when you're asking for money, right? This is really good information when you're asking for money. And then the other one here is value. And we're waiting. But if you look, it gives you basically uh, two value points and um, let's see, uh, actual value and estimated value. And I always go with the actual value. This is the pricing that you've put in when you uh, put your uh, records in for your books. That's the price you put in. So a lot of administrators don't realize that your library collection is worth a quarter of a million dollars. Right. And actually almost a half a million dollars now when you factor in Chromebooks and like you add right. those two numbers together. It's almost like I, I did use those numbers because I'm like, I need security cameras. We have a half a million dollars of stuff just laying around in our library spaces. Yeah. 
And so that just gives you a little bit more power um, when you are more information. Principals, administrators like data. They love data. The more data you can give them, the happier they are, I think, sometimes. So that's this report. And um, again, it's really useful for cleaning up call numbers and figuring out that. Just like that circulation types is really useful for figuring out what you're circulating and what you're doing. Any questions? Those are kind of the things that I had on my list um, that I thought would be the most useful to you. If you want, I can talk about resource lists really quick and printing labels. That would be great. And then um, when we wrap up the conversation by 3.30, any last minute tips you can think of or give us like end of the year stuff? Because that's well, we where can, our brains are right now. We can talk about end of the year stuff and inventory if you'd rather talk about that, because we did mention that. Um, that might be useful because that's, I think, where we're all at right now is the need to inventory and then wrapping things up. Okay. Let's do that. So inventory, here it is. So that's under admin inventory. I'm at the elementary school, Julia. So uh, um, stop me if you have questions or whatever. I can go to any of the other schools as well. So and she's been an inventory queen. I think she's been doing an inventory almost every single year. Um, yeah. Our other two libraries, I don't know if they've done an inventory in quite a spell. Yeah. So, um, well, let's look. So you don't have any in progress inventories, but here's your completed ones. So yeah, you've you've done really great on your on your inventories. It's might be uh, because of the situation when you don't have kids in the library right now, a good time if you haven't done a full library inventory and you've been doing a lot of weeding or a lot of cleaning and updating and all of that, it might be a really good time to do a, a new full library inventory, not just sections, but full library. And the reason I recommend that um, is because uh, one of the problems, again, is uh, it falls back on those paperbacks. Um, if you do just fiction, for example, and you go fiction A to fiction Z when you're selecting your report or whatever, it, if you have some of call numbers that are different outside of your fiction realm. So those call member prefixes, if you have some that are F, that might not show up in your FIC AAA. Does that make sense? Um, the ones in brackets, I don't know if they show up in your FIC AAA or to FIC ZZZ. If you have PBK, they might not show up. So it's a really good time to do a full and complete inventory to catch everything, uh, uh, rather than just a designated space area. If your call numbers are perfect and nobody's ever are, then you can sometimes do that. And that's what they kind of say. And, you know, you go to a destiny workshop, they say, oh, you can just do your fiction this year and your nonfiction next year and your magazines the third year, or whatever, your periodicals. And my experience is because we have so much turnover throughout the libraries and so many different people cataloging and a lack of, um, uh, somebody coming in untrained, and Andreas, you know, like you said, they just drop you in and say, oh, here you go. You're the librarian now. Um, and because there's that lack of uh, explanation and training, then we have a whole call numbers that are all over the board or no procedures manual in place. There's a billion reasons for that or turnover. You know, I took over from um, my first job. 
I took over from a gal who took over from the old librarian who had been there, um, gosh, Mrs. Fuller had probably been there 25 years. And the gal after her was only there two years. And then I took it over and I was only there five years. And so we all created our own routines, which made sense to what we were doing at the time. But um, it didn't always make sense when you got when you got into it. And luckily, we weren't um, we were still using card catalogs when I started. So I love card catalogs. What can I say? But that's a lot of filing and another story. So starting an inventory is a good thing to do now if you have time and um, you can, I always brought kids in to scan for me, but you may or may not have that ability to do that. And I don't know if you, what kind of scanners you have, but if you have a Chromebook and a plug-in scanner, right? You can you can do you can move around your library real easy for inventory. So that's that's easy, and Jen Jen knows how to do that. So into other end of the year things, of course, starting to get fines, starting to mark books lost. Um, I I believe. I do not believe in uh, kids coming to school the next in September and not being able to check out because they didn't return a book last September, right? That's one of my pet peeves. I believe kids should start, they may owe you money, but if they're marked into the lost, then at least they can start checking out again. And after it goes to lost, it becomes the parent's problem as far as I'm concerned, and they need to figure that out, not necessarily the child's problem. And that wasn't meant for, that was automated for us, right? So we just need to, um, as soon as kids walk out the door, then everyone just needs to, um, how do we manually do that? Because it was automated. You're gonna, right? Yeah, you're going to have to manually do it. Um, but I think... And I'll have to look it up because again, it's one of those things that you do once a year, but I think from the admin level, you can go in and it's under library policies, I think, where you, or, or, or yeah, where you change your, you edit under circulation type or patron type. I have to look, cause like I said, I haven't done it and I haven't done it in five years where you tell it that everything is um, overdue after the next day, right? And I then, remember that it was, a, it was a tricky, funky thing and you walked us all through it a couple right. of times at the end. And well, you're, you're always how to do it. If, if I have access to my Google account, it might, I might have that document in there. I'll look for it. Or you might have that document because I shared it with you, right? Probably you'll have more luck finding it than I will, but it's a real easy process. You just have to remember to change it the next day. My, my preference, and but this doesn't apply this year, my preference was the last visit that teachers bring their kids in, especially at the elementary school, is if they still have overdue books, you call those kids up to your desk and mark it lost in front of them. I, you know, you've had you've had that book here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it lost if you bring it back. And sometimes that really is effective because the kids get <gasps> panicky. You're marking it lost, it's not lost, I know where it is. Well, I'm marking it lost because you haven't returned it. If you return it, when I check it in, it'll take that fine right off. But otherwise, this, this is it. And that really works. I have felt that it worked well with elementary and it worked very well with middle school kids. Hadn't tried it with, with high school, so who knows. But that last class visit is a really good time to mark those lost because um, you do it in front of it. And so you generally only have maybe half a dozen kids per class, maybe a few more. But that would be a really good way to do it. When you run that final, um, at the elementary level, when you run that final homeroom report where you show the teacher what they all have out, then you can mark them lost individually. And it's not 
it doesn't take that long to do it student by student if you look at their your circulation. So um, if I go up here to circulation and go to homeroom and, and choose a homeroom and randomly, and if I decide to, to let, you know, now right now you may not have any books checked out to kids at all, right? Uh, Julia, uh, we do. We have quite a few at the elementary. It's been slow, but Julia has circulated at least like, I don't know, 1,500 books so far, maybe more than that. She's, oh, okay. She's that's good. Books. Good, good, good to hear. So um, that's the other thing I do is, is go through and get those books marked lost so the kids start fresh at the beginning of the year. I know I had staff that didn't like to mark them lost because they like to see that the kids still had out. But um, that was something I just told them they had to do. That was my, my thing is mark them lost. So run a report if you need to see what they have out. Um, any other questions? Anything else? So you're just taking a loss at the end of the year and there's no accountability to the kids? Well, no, it stays under the record, right? If you mark a book lost under a student's name, it stays with them. Um, you can ch check out their history or their fines history, right? And and you'll see that it's lost. Let me go back. It must still appear on Destiny Discover. You know, all the kids have access to log into their accounts. It hasn't become a habit yet, but. I'm sure it's still on their Destiny Discover screen as well, where they can digitally yeah. see their own account. So here, you, if I go to view history, I can see everything they have out. And if it was marked lost, it would tell me, right? And so the fine would stay with him. Um, so let's see. Let's go and I've back gotten to rid check. of the fine. I, I, don't have, I don't find the kids. No, but the cost of the book would stay with them, not the, yeah, I, I never do, did do overdue fines or anything like that. That's more work than it's worth to keep track of. You did it at the high school, Jen, right, for a while? Um, yeah, we got rid of it about three years ago, though. It, like, right about the library got rid of it, we did it as well, especially because yeah, yeah. we were serving so many, like, at-risk kids, and it was just kind of a negative perception and it wasn't yeah. worth it 10 cents or whatever you know yeah. yeah no no it's not worth I don't think it's worth keeping track of um, that was just my my opinion I mean we we limit them to by checkout if they have too many fines or whatever so um I don't know I'll choose another homeroom here Probably not a good choice. So you can see what they have out when it's due and then you can view their history and you can view fine history as well in here. So, and if it's red, obviously it was overdue. So, does that make sense? Yes. Sorry, I have another I have another meeting and I'm just texting them Fine. saying that we're running a little I want to wind it up. 329. <laughs> yeah. so. Karen, I I mean like honestly, this is we need you're so amazing. You are the destiny queen and we need it's like a thing that you got to chip away at. You know, you can only take so much and, Right and digest it and then actually do it and take so much and and i know um, you'll probably tell me jen you need to stay on top of those follow updates and the regular you know emails that they send out and the platform updates i mean what other recommendations do you have for us as a team to chip away at our catalog cleanup i would start with getting rid of um, your duplicate patrons right that's easy to do. And I would start then start cleaning up your patron catalog so that you're down to the, 
you know, start with your teachers. That's easy because you can run a report and then get rid of teachers. If they still have stuff out, but they left five years ago, you're never going to see it again. Let it go. Um, if it magically appears, hoo hoo. If they left last year and have a Chromebook with them, turn that over to the principal and let them deal with it. It's not your problem. Um, that's my, anyway, that's my, my thoughts on that. Then start cleaning out your kids. Um, and there's ways to do batch deletes. So for example, you can delete um, by graduation year and get rid of all the graduation kids that have graduated um, from 2020 on back. And that'll make a big deal. And Jen can do this at her level, right? You guys don't have to do it. If you see a duplicate kid, you can do that. And I don't know if I talked about uh, duplicate patrons, um, but if I go to, to admin, catch up with me. Um, and then go to admin. And then it's wait, I'm waiting on it to go on my side. So if it goes, it goes. But I, I showed you how I have that over on here. So admin, you can find duplicates there and then you can quickly and easily say, oh, um, that's the same kid. I want the one with the picture. You can merge them or if there's no books under one account, you just delete it. Keep the one that's the good account. Um, so that's where I'd start. I think um, I think that at least on my end, my destiny just went down. So I think you might be laggy or funky or something if it's frozen on your end too. Yeah, mine just stopped too. So if you have um, time, clean up those call numbers. You can run that report. I would print it out and then highlight the call numbers you need to get rid of. Do uh, just search by barcode real quick. And um, there it is, um, update patrons. And clean up, clean up those bar call numbers. And the other thing I would do is standardize your call numbers across the district. And then there's a way, and I'll show Jen how to do it, a batch update so that if one building is using F and another building is using FIC capitalized and another building is using FIC uncapitalized, you can standardize that. And then once you get that cleaned up and standardized, you write them down on a little card or print them up, type them up and tape it to your computer that you use for cataloging so that that reminds you what you're doing because it's easy to forget do it professional i haven't seen a professional book in a year did i use pro prof prf that kind of thing so write them down that really helps you out so well, Karen, thank you so much. You know, we are actually, um, our team is, we're doing as many, we do a virtual check-in every morning and then we get together face-to-face -to -face when we can. So we're not doing a virtual check-in tomorrow morning, but we're actually gonna be in Julia's library on Thursday. So we can pick up this conversation and begin, you know, we'll just process, process, digest, and we'll pick up the conversation on Thursday. Wonderful. Um, and Karen, you're fabulous. Oh, and thank you. I forwarded you the OASL conference blurb. We're really behind in planning this year because of the pandemic. Everyone's kind of, you know, it'll, it'll be a conference. It'll be just fine. We're just, we're behind, but you would be fabulous having a, um, a couple of sessions where we do this. Would be well, I would it's always be needed. Yeah, I, I would love to do it, especially like you said, it, it does get left behind or lots of people coming in. Um, and so if you want me to, we'll talk. So I can, I can, we can take our little trailer and go to Florence and come see yeah. you. So that would be fun. That would be so much fun. Does anyone else have any questions for Karen before we, before we adjourn? Okay, um, thank you so much, Karen. I'll be in touch and I appreciate you so much. It was so nice to see you and um, we'll just talk soon.
Sounds okay. good. Good plan. So, all right. Bye. Bye.